everybody. Thank you so much for joining me today to hear a little bit about the Yale Young Global Scholars Program. My name is Ami Sobin and I'm the Associate Director of External Affairs for YYGS. I've been with the program in various capacities over the last eight and a half years. So I've seen the program grow from about 300 students to what it is today, where we're able to serve about 2,400 students. I'm very proud of this program. It is exceptional. It's um, the fruits of our labor. It's what we work towards all year round to host this program for all of you over the summer. So I hope that you'll take some time, listen to what I have to say, look on our website following my presentation, and hopefully apply. If, if some of you I know are um, not eligible this year, but you will be eligible for next year, this is a great opportunity to learn about your options, your summer program options, if YYGS is right for you. And if it is, you'll get to a little bit of an insight into what the application looks like. So you can start thinking a little bit about how you might wanna complete that application. I'm gonna talk for about 15 to 20 minutes just to go through some program logistics, give you some information on the curriculum, the, the eligibility, the application, and then I'll pass it over to Armand where he can talk a little bit more into detail about his experience actually participating. So you can hear it from you know, an alum's mouth, um, how they experienced the, the application, maybe he'll give you, or the program, maybe he'll give you some tips on the application. And then we can stick around to see if anybody has any questions. And uh, we should be done here in about um, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time and whatever that next hour is for you. <laughs> Uh, wherever you are and wherever you're watching this, it should, shouldn't take more than an hour. So I'm gonna share my screen and share a little presentation with you. Um, all of this information can be found in more detail on the website. So if you're trying to hurry to take notes, that's perfectly fine, but just know that paying attention might be more meaningful and then you can always visit our website after I'm done speaking. So YYGS um, is a global program. As you can see in this beautiful picture here, this was taken in 2019, I believe. And these were current participants on campus and they just, they're, they're pointing to their country. And you can see that they represent just, just these six students alone represent six different countries. And that's kind of the, the common thread that you're gonna see um, when I talk about the program, but also if you ever visit our website and look at the alumni page, you're going to just see where everybody's from. And it's a very beautiful thing how we can bring students together from all over the world. So YYGS is an academic summer enrichment program for high school students from all over the world. No country is excluded. We want to see students from anywhere and everywhere. It's more about a merit-based acceptance pro uh, process than you know, where you're from. Uh, of course, the range and diversity for cultures and countries and, and socioeconomics, demographics, um, adds a lot of depth to our program. That's what makes our program so diverse and actually so unique. We're the only pre-college program that we're aware of that serves such a global audience and put such a focus on that global nature of a program. Um, so students participate in one of four interdisciplinary two-week sessions. You're going to see on the next slide the options and the dates that you're going to be able to choose from um, on the application, but just keep in mind it's only two weeks. Um, you're going to immerse yourself. You're going to come in with maybe one perspective or one mindset in terms of what you want to major in, let's say, for example. And then for sure, after the two weeks with us, you're going to be transformed. It's one of the most common adjectives that I hear from our um, alums when I speak with them after they completed the two weeks with us, they say, wow, I am, tra the transformation that why I just contributed to my life, you know, I thought I wanted to, to be an engineer, but now I think I really want to pursue my love of poetry or acting or something like that. I think it just, it allows you to explore. It allows you to kind of, you know, network with people who could be your mentor or advisor one day and learn about all of the different options that you could pursue as opposed to just maybe the few options that you thought you had when you came into the program. It kind of allows you to see what you're really interested in or what you might want to explore even further. It brings up a lot of questions for you. 
So um, I know it only is two weeks, which doesn't sound like a very long time at all, but it's very intensive. It's very rigorous academically. You're gonna be uh, attending a number of components each day. You're gonna have some work to do in between the days as well. So, um, you know, it's definitely why we just is for that student who's interested in learning for the sake of learning, as opposed to um, you wanna learn a little bit maybe, and then go to a concert or a play or something like that. Unfortunately, we don't offer that, those options, excursions, um, because again, it's only two weeks and we don't really have the time for that. We want you to really get what we have planned for you. We want you to get the most out of our program as possible. So as I mentioned, um, there are four um, interdisciplinary tracks. On the actual application, you will be able to rank these four. You can give us up to four, you can give us one, two, or three, it's up to you. If your mind is completely set on attending politics, law, and economics, because you really want to become a, a lawyer one day or something, um, that would be, you could, that could be your one and only choice, or you can say, maybe I kind of want to explore solving global challenges because it is cross-disciplinary. And I am interested, you know, in kind of exploring other options. You could put that as your second choice. Um, and then again, you can go on to your third and fourth. We try to give students their first or second choice. It really all just depends on the um, demonstrated interest in your application, the applicant pool, the availability that you provide. So here are the dates up top. There's three different session dates that we have available for you. Um, they're all identical sessions. You're gonna get the same options if you attend all three. They're all gonna be globally diverse. It's just really dependent on your schedule. If you have something else going on over the summer that you say, oh, I can only attend the first session or depending on when school ends for you, maybe you can only attend the second session. Um, again, you can say I'm open to anything, or you could say I specifically can only attend the second session. It's completely up to you. All of the uh, sessions will be offered online in 2022. We were very optimistic earlier in the fall. We launched our application offering two residential sessions and one. So the first two were supposed to be residential. The third was going to be online. But um, we, we also had the big caveat where, you know, we were gonna see where the world was at a certain point when we needed to make a, a decision and see how the pandemic was going, see how embassies were doing with visas and, you know, just the, the public health uh, temperature overall. So what we've come to realize, um, sadly, is that it's not conducive right now to hosting a, a residential program. And so for the safety of everybody involved and also so we can maintain that global nature of our program. Last summer, we hosted students from over 150 countries. Can you imagine bringing that many, you know, that diverse of a group in one room at the same time? I can't. And so in order to maintain the integrity of our program, we decided to just move completely online. Don't fret i mean we we are this is our this will be our third year doing it and at each year we've learned something to make it even better last year it was a great success students rated they gave us their satisfaction rating of eight or higher out of ten eight nine or ten and that is very comparable and and basically the same as what students would say when they were on campus you know of course you're on campus and there's there's the other things that you have to consider in terms of living on campus and what students might not be satisfied with. And then when you're virtually, you're thinking I'd rather be on campus and meeting these people in person. And of course we would prefer that as well. Unfortunately, it's just not possible for this upcoming summer. So if you're in your last year of eligibility for YYGS, I would say just apply. What you choose to do with your um, admission letter, let's say you're admitted, um, is completely up to you when you get that decision. Next, next year in March is when we release decisions. Um, but I would say give it a shot, apply. You know, the virtual session is very, very, has been very successful. Um, we have an alum today who can speak to you about that. You can ask questions. But you can also visit our website and look at the testimonials from our alums, even the parents. Parents have sent me emails with um, glowing language about how their, their 
son or daughter or their child was very happy with, with the, the experience they had online. Um, it's equally as transformative. And actually sometimes it's a little bit more engaging because you know, you're know you're focusing on the conversation. You're not focusing on, oh, I wanna go get ice cream or something like that. So um, if you need more details about the session tracks, please visit the website. We have pages dedicated to each of these four tracks. And um, we also post some questions in on those pages. So if you're ever asking yourself certain questions, or if you think I've never asked myself these questions, but I want to, these could be the sessions for you. I would keep an open mind for sure. So the program curriculum is the bread and butter, of course, of our program as it is an academic program. Students will learn alongside like-minded peers from all over the world in different learning contexts. And um, the peer-to-peer -peer interaction and the social connections that you make during YYGS, the two weeks that you're with us, um, are what's most remembered um, after the program. You know, students usually complete the program and we say, what was your favorite part about the program? And they say, all of the, the, the new perspectives I've learned and all the connections that I've made from all over the world. So um, we give those, we make those connections happen through these um, components that I'm gonna dive into here in just a second. So lectures, of course, you can't have a program at Yale without having lectures. So we have about five lectures for you throughout the two weeks that you're gonna be with us. All of the lectures are related to the track that you're attending. So if you're in the STEM track, all of your lectures are gonna be related to that in some way, although they're still interdisciplinary in nature. So we do recruit um, Yale faculty who are leading professionals and practitioners in their field. And they're gonna talk to you for about an hour and then there's some time at the end for questions and answers. Of course, when we're residential, it looks like this. This is the Yale Law School and this is um, a lecture taking place in person. Um, for 2022, it's gonna look more like this. So you're gonna see the professor on the big screen and we will all be in the background. It's you know, the same, same exact material you're gonna be learning. Um, there is always time for, Q and A at the end, and actually the virtual session allows for the students that may not want to speak in an environment such as a Yale Law School auditorium in front of 200 of their peers. Um, the virtual setting does allow for you to kind of come out of your shell and feel a little bit more comfortable asking a question through Zoom. We also have a chat feature for students, so you can type in your chat. Um, in your comments or your questions and the, the many times the professor does acknowledge the chat feature as well. Um, and we also have the ability to add subtitles onto the Zoom um, settings. So that's also great if, if English is maybe your third language or something, then you feel a little bit more comfortable following along with subtitles, we can also enable those for you. So there are Definitely many pros about being online, especially when it comes to the lecture. So now mind you, the lecture is one of the largest components of our program in terms of um, quantity of students in one Zoom room. Most of our other um, components that I'm gonna get into have a student to teacher ratio of about one to 11 or one to 13 average. So um, again, this is the, the largest component you'll be in and everything else is gonna be more intimate intimate small group discussions. Breakout sessions are what the component that follows each lecture because the last thing we want to, to happen is for you to go to a, a really amazing lecture with rich material and the, the information goes in one year and out the other. We want you to really absorb it. We want you to think deeply about it. We want you to be able to engage in a discussion. Maybe if you have questions or you have a new perspective, um, you can offer that perspective to your peers and you guys can just have a friendly discussion. So that's what breakout sessions are for. They're all facilitated by an instructor. All of our instructors are um, in academia. So most of them are Yale college graduate or professional students, but we do hire outside of Yale. And that's just because we are growing at such a fast rate and we can't possibly find enough instructors at one university. So we do look outside of that, but they're all, you know, they're as diverse as the student population. Um, and, you know, they're, they're, they're gonna be the people that you see the most at YYGS because they're gonna be leading most of these small group discussions. So your breakout session, you'll have the same instructor for the 
over the two weeks. You'll have the same group so that you develop some kind of um, familiarity and comfortability with talking. Sometimes it takes a little bit for you to come out of your shell and actually want to participate. And because YYJS is a participatory program, this hopefully adds some like comfort to you when you're thinking, okay, I have to participate, I have to speak, I have to you know, think critically and offer some kind of questions or feedback. Um, so maybe having the same group helps with that. So seminars is a fantastic component that students absolutely love. These are um, usually standalone classes are about 90 minutes long and they're curated and taught by the instructors. Before you come to YYGS, we'll I'll give you a blue book and that's just um, a big a PDF full of seminar listings. So you're gonna you're gonna look through them and you'll have about four to six seminars per two week session, depending on which session track you're participating in. And you're gonna rate your interest uh, on a form that we're gonna provide for you. And then we will assign you um, usually it's the top seminar, some of the top seminars that you rated your interest in. So we're gonna give you your um, schedule. And that is unique with YYJS because no two students have the same schedule. So it's actually really cool that you know you get the options to kind of tailor your schedule to your interests. I can tell you that it's, it's really tough because there's so many seminars and they're so, so, so interesting. But um, what's really cool about this component is you're going to get a different breadth of knowledge. You're going to get a breadth of knowledge um, because you're going to be taking so many different seminars. The instructors will engage with you. There's about 15, 18 students in each seminar. And uh, you sometimes there's pre-reading or something like that just to kind of get everybody on the same foundational level of knowledge because we understand people are coming from all over the world, you know, we, we definitely keep that um, global aspect in mind as we're curating the entire program. So if you're ever worried about, oh, I'm not, I'm not going to be up to the level of other students, et cetera, don't worry, we help you with that as long as you complete some of the pre-reading and the pre-assignment. Sometimes there's some videos to watch. But we definitely try to help you as much as we can. And then, you know, there's no prerequisites to attend YYGS, even if you're starting from, from scratch and just kind of learning these things new, that's okay. We don't expect you to come as a, an experienced professional in these fields. We just really want you to learn and we want you to be interested. So if you're very unfamiliar with topics, just ask questions. And that, that is, you're going to get a lot of, out of YYGS in that way. So another component we have is family time and family time tends to be one of the most uh, favorited components by our, our participants. As you can see, they're having fun. They're taking off their academic hats. They're putting on their social hats here. Oops. Here is the residential, you know, when they're in person. And then on the right, you can see this is last year's Zoom or two years ago. And it's a very loose curriculum. We don't really tell the instructors how to lead these, but we give them options and ideas. But sometimes they have minds of their own and they wanna have a group discussion about cats versus dogs. Or I know last year, one of the families decided to um, have a dress up party. So they dressed up as their favorite um, food. This one, you can see, I guess, Tyler, who's the, the YYJS parent here decided to pretend they're on some kind of beach vacation and it actually looks really fun. So uh, this is where you're gonna connect and bond with each other. You know, bonding usually happens over casual conversations where you can um, share similar interests and kind of, you know, just kind of connect in that different way, foster those relationships. So that's what family time is. It's an opportunity for you to have different kinds of bonding relationships with each other. You know, it's a family. What do families do? They they have friendly debates. They they laugh together. They you know learn from each other. Sometimes you might have a show and tell where you can bring something from your country and show the rest of the group. You know, a symbol of your country, your culture, and it's also a built-in support system for students. Um, sometimes students need somebody to talk to during the program. For whatever reason, it doesn't have to be negative all the time. It could be, you know, a positive. I just wanted to say thank you or, hey, I'm really feeling a little behind. What can you help me? 
Um, so, you know, this is definitely the place to go. You can, you know, go, go to your peers. You can go to your instructor, who's your YWGS parent, or you can also come to leadership, which is always, always, always an option. You know, sometimes students don't feel comfortable doing that. So that's why we have sort of a next step for you, but we're always there for you if you ever need anything. It's an open line of communication. A few other um, components that we have that we're very proud of are impact panel simulation and opportunities across Yale. Impact panel is when we bring back YYJS alumni to talk to you. There's about four to five, four alumni that we bring back and it's a panel discussion where they're just talking to you about what they've been doing since completing the YYJS program and how YYGS impacted and influenced what they decided to do and the connections that they've made. And it's basically just an inspiring component for you to learn and see because you're in, you're actually in the program at that moment, how you can use your resources and the connections and the network that you have during YYGS to enhance maybe an idea or a project that you have for the future. Um, so that's the impact panel. The simulation is very similar to capstone. If we did have the program in person, it would have been um, a capstone project, but simulation is very similar. We're, we're going to give you an open ended issue or topic, and you're going to kind of narrow in on a specific topic within the larger topic and work with a team of about four to five students. Um, very similar again to a capstone project, you're going to have to collaborate, you're going to have to research together, you're going to have to, you know, come to some kind of agreement, put together a presentation, and at the end, you're going to have to present on it. So there's a lot of intangible skills that you're going to develop over the two weeks because you'll, you'll be meeting with your team um, very regularly, and you're going to have two instructors that, that are going to guide you throughout this entire process. So they're going to be your um, consultants, if you will, during this, during this, and it's actually a really fun component of the program. It is, it is work, but at the end of it, you get very proud and you guys come up with some really, really great ideas. So um, the difference between the residential and the, the virtual um, simulation capstone is that when you're on campus, you would only work with students in your track. So if you were in, in the innovations of science and technology session, you would only be working with students from that session. Virtually though, we can actually pair you with students from across the session. So you're gonna be not only working with students from your session, which could be innovations of science and technology, but you also have politics on economics, um, literature, philosophy, and culture, solving global challenges, you, you all can work together. So this is another way for you to meet um, new students and, and new people during the program. So it's really, it's really great. Opportunities across Yale is a component that we added a few years ago because we wanted students to have access and just an awareness of the opportunities that they could take advantage of when they go to college. Um, you know, there's lots of departments at universities and sometimes it could be a little overwhelming there's labs, there's libraries, there's, you know, the career strategy office, the teaching and learning center, study abroad office, um, the bursar's office, you know, just to name a few, there's, there's a lot of different um, offices. And so we just kind of wanted to give you a breath of that knowledge and show you the options and say, you know, if you can opt into two of the many offerings that we have to learn more about. Um, so studying abroad or fellowships, or um, we have an admissions talk as well, in case you're one day going to plan on applying to university. If you're just curious to learn more about that process, we have an admissions talk. So opportunities across Yale is a very cool session. Again, it's self-selected. So we're, we're going to give you a list and you're going to create your interest and we're going to place you in some of your top ones. Eligibility requirements. Um, this is very important because in order to receive a decision letter, you must be eligible to participate. So you must be 16 years old by July 19th, which is the first day of session three. Unfortunately, we cannot serve students younger than 16. So as long as you're 16, by that date, you can attend the third session. Um, English fluency, you must have a very strong working knowledge, reading, writing, speaking, comprehending English. It is a program that is conducted in English. 
So um, if you're curious to know whether you meet those standards, you can try to just take a Coursera course, uh, you know, a 101 kind of a freshman level course, or Yale has an open Yale course website where there's some free lectures that we post. So it's oyc.yale.edu. And you can just take a look again at one of their freshman level courses and see if that's a course that you can follow. And if it is, then for sure, you'll be able to do well in YYGS. Um, we do not ask for standardized test scores on the application, the only one that you can submit, and this is completely optional, is an English fluency test like Duolingo, the TOEFL. Um, it's not required, but if you've taken it and you feel very, very proud of your score, just upload it. And that's just something that we can, you know, we can see that your English is kind of up to a certain level. Um, grade level, so you must be a current high school sophomore or junior or the international equivalent. So this just means that you're going to be graduating in May or June of 2023 or 2024. So you'll have one to two years remaining of secondary school after completing the program. And then we do not allow um, alumni to participate twice. So I don't, besides Armand, I don't think we have any alums on this, on this um, meeting, so I, I won't even get into that, but really the basic point is if you've participated before, unfortunately, you're not eligible to participate again. So the application, um, it's a pretty robust application. It's very similar to a college application. We actually use the same system as Yale uses and many, many, many universities across the United States use for to host their online applications. We have some required components. Um, and mind you, when I'm going through all of these components, everything must be submitted by the deadline of January 10th, 2022. It's very important that you meet that deadline and take this seriously and, and give enough time to yourself and the other people that have to work to complement your application because if unfortunately you don't submit it on time, we cannot review your application. So that's kind of a bummer, but we have, it's only mid-November, so we have plenty of time for you to get that application in on time and even early. <laughs> so uh, let's go through the list, activities list. We ask for you to um, let us know up to three activities that you're involved in current um, or in the past. It doesn't have to be something that you're in currently, but maybe something that you just wanna let us know, hey, I, I was a Boy Scout for three years or something like that. <clears throat> we ask for you to give us an explanation or some context for the most meaningful activity. So it's just, a, you know, not, not a long, just a little paragraph. When If you say I'm president of the debate team and this is why it's most meaningful to me or, or I babysit my little sister, this is why it's the most meaningful thing to me. Activities are activities. It's just what it sounds like. They don't have to be school related. They could be, you know, if most of your time is helping your parents at their little shop, that's okay. That's an activity. If most of your time is spent reading, that's an activity. You know, anything you do in your free time is, a, is an activity. So um, think about it broadly, list the ones that would be of interest, you think, to us. And um, a lot of times it is nice if it relates back to, you know, providing some demonstrated interest into why you want to attend YYGS or specifically the track that you're interested in, if it's politics, law, and economics, and you've been attending MUNs for, you know, the last seven years or something, that's something that would be interesting for us to know. Um, oops, sorry. Next, we have a essay and a short response question. So the essay is 400 words and the short response is 200 words. And this is where I want you to really, you know, put down your pencil or your computer and just think. When you see the question, which is a very personal question, this year it's something like if, tell us about a time when your courage failed you and what did you learn from it? So it's a very personal question. It's not a question that you can Google and find somebody's story and tell us that story. That's not what we want. We don't want a generic answer. Admissions counselors never want you to write generically or what you think we want to read. We really want to know who you are. Think of think of when you finish a book and the character kind of a character kind of stays with you for a while because they were so unique or or their story was very touching. That's that's kind of what we're looking for. We want to know who you are as a person. We don't want 
you know, to say, oh, we read 10 applications and you know, we saw the same topic on all of them. Um, it doesn't have to be academic related. It could be anything, anything you've learned, riding a bike, a family story, you know, it could be literally anything. So when you think about what, what you're going to write about, maybe ask somebody, say, what is something about me that you think was interesting? It could Usually it's something that you just don't find interesting at all. It's things that we think are very normal for our day to day, but to somebody living in the United States, your normal could be our very abnormal <laughs> story. So, um, or unique story or, or interesting story. So think deeply about what you're going to write about and proofread it, um, edit it, you know, work on it for a little while and, and make sure that the grammar is correct. You're you know, you're submitting a, a, a well-rounded essay that you've looked into a few times and made some edits to. We have two fast take responses. And these, these are questions where we kind of want like a short 280 character response. It's kind of, it's more than a tweet, but it's similar in the nature of just being concise and to the point. So there's questions um, in the past we've had, if you could have dinner with somebody dead or alive, who would it be? And then you would respond in 280 characters, something like that. So these are kind of more fun and they kind of exercise your creativity a little bit. So they're, um, you know, when, when you think about them, just, just think, how can I answer this as concisely as possible, but like interesting. Of course, we want to know the truth. We want to know who you would actually have dinner with, not who you think we would want you to have dinner with. So be as honest as possible in, in your application that actually makes it more interesting to us. We require official school transcript. So this is something that your school official will have to upload on your behalf. Um, due to COVID, you know, I know that some schools are closed or you know, there's lack of staffing or something like that. So um, if you have any issues getting the school transcript or the officials, you know, somebody to upload it for you, just let us know, email us, and we can help you out with that and offer you some kind of um, uh, resolution to that problem. Two recommendations. These are people who know you very well in an academic context. One should come from a teacher, and one the, other, the second one could also come from a teacher, or it could come from an internship advisor, a coach, um, a men, not a mentor, no, no family or friends or mentors, but it could come from somebody who else, else that knows you very well academically. I always like to see them coming from teachers. It's just kind of, for me, because it's such an academic program, it, it makes so much sense, but you might've interned for over two summers with somebody who could really speak to your strengths. And that's really what you want. You want to ask somebody that knows you well and that can speak to your strengths. Um, this is also something that you do not have control over in terms of when they complete it. So that's why, again, like I said, it's important that you give yourself and your, your school officials and, and teachers enough time to complete these forms. It's the transcript and the two recommendations. Um, and generally, we see, we see students go from starting your application to completion. It takes about two to three weeks. And that's not because it's gonna take you that long to complete it. It's because you wanna give your recommenders enough time. You don't want them to rush. You want them to be, um, you know, if they can write a little something on your form, it, would, it, would, it, it only helps you. So you wanna give them enough time. The application fee is $75 for a regular decision, which is the deadline on January 10th. However, if um, the $75 poses a financial burden to your family. We also offer a fee waiver. And in order to access the fee waiver form, you're going to have to complete the financial aid portion, which I'll get into in just a second. And the last thing here in bullets is you have to press the finalize and pay button on the last page. And um, we, we add that here because sometimes students don't realize you have to actually submit their application. You might think, oh, I've completed everything, it's done, but there's a lot of um, times where we see students just didn't press that button, so don't forget to do that. As I mentioned, we do offer financial aid. We do have a financial aid section on our, on our application. It's um, very similar, again, to a college application, although it's not as bulky. You're gonna see terminology that you're gonna also see on a college FAFSA or CSS profile. 
Um, so definitely sit with, uh, and you know, you can sit with a parent, legal guardian, anyone that's responsible for you financially, because we will be asking questions that you probably are unaware of. You don't know, you know, exact, exactly the financial situation of your family. The more information we have, the more aid we're able to allocate. So, you know, answer those questions with as much detail as possible. We also require supporting documents to back up what you're telling us your family situation is. And we do have a list of those documents on our website and the application itself. <clears throat> but just to give you a sense of what those look like, for our international students, they could be tax forms, they could be letters from your parents' employers stating their, their salary and benefits, um, it could be bank statements. Um, there's other, there's a, a list of other options. Um, and the more, the better, of course. Um, don't worry about having to translate them. We, if you can, that's great. If not, then we will be able to have a reader who's familiar with the language um, review the applications. And we can cover up to full tuition, um, but again, that is based on how well you complete the application. We do not have an unlimited financial aid fund, unfortunately. So many times there is a little, a little chunk uh, that parents and families have to um, bridge the gap, but sometimes we can cover the full cost. And so that's only to your benefit to, to complete that application to the best of your ability and your parents' ability. Um, it's located, the application is located within the actual YYGS application. So when you see that question of, do you want to apply for need-based financial aid, press yes. If you press no, and you submit your application, unfortunately, you can't go back. And, and if you're admitted, you'll be admitted at, with, without a financial aid package. So if you have any questions about this, if you get confused or anything like that, just send us an email. We usually, we're pretty good at responding um, within a day or two. So don't hesitate to ever reach out to us. The deadline that you're gonna be concerned with here is the regular decision deadline as the early action pass, but don't worry, it's okay. Um, regular decision is when we see the majority of our applications come in for many, many, many reasons. Um, and for more information, please visit our website or send us an email at global.scholars at yale.edu. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop talking. That was a lot of information. Going to pass it over to Armand so he can give you some um, more fun experiential information about YYGS. So Armand, do you wanna? Either you can turn the camera on or you can just start off. There you are. Hello. Um, so hi. Um, hi, Amy, everyone. Um, I'll be presenting um, <clears throat> you about my experience uh, with YYGS. Uh, I have a little presentation, so I, I guess I can share my screen as well. Mm -hmm. um, so it's not really an informative one just to structure my presentation. Um, I hope you can see it. Yeah, so firstly, um, uh, my talk will, will consist of two parts. Firstly, I'll talk about my experience with the uh, application process and then with the program itself. So the first thing you need to be prepared for is essay writing. Uh, as Amy has mentioned, it's it's a, a major part of uh, the application process and you need to be familiar with uh, the conventions with how you should write, with uh, like, uh, with what quality of writing is expected from you, and uh, if that's something that you don't have experience with, I suggest you to use some online resources. Fortunately, there are a lot of online resources for that. You just Google uh, the same thing that you Google. You would Google for uh, usual college applications, uh, and uh, that's how you would uh, be at least introduced to the uh, way that you write essays. And of course you shouldn't like stretch anything about yourself, just write honestly about yourself. I believe that everyone has some interesting things in their lives and it's only the question of how you present them to the reader. And also uh, uh, one important thing I, I've taken for myself is that you, um, you always need to imagine you need to write and then imagine how it would be perceived from the uh, perspective of the person who reviews your application. 
So uh, yeah, I guess that would be my advice uh, for SE writing. Then the financial aid, uh, uh, I guess uh, the application is not, uh, it's not that long, if I'm not mistaken, but you need to uh, start it as early as possible, primarily because the terminology is, is kind of alien to you because you're, well, you're still kids. Uh, and you need to get a lot of like employment statements, salary statements, and all of that stuff. It needs time to be prepared, and uh, that's why you need to uh, take care of it early. Then the uh, academic parts. So I'll be talking about my experience in the politics, law, and economics track. Uh, and I want to talk about all the parts of exemplified by specific situations, I think that the, it will give a more uh, holistic vision of what the program is like. F the first one is opportunities across Yale, and uh, there were two uh, meetings. The first one was about uh, admissions process, which is, I think, kind of obvious. I won't even uh, talk about that that much, but the second one was about uh, how do you get patents, how uh, the whole system works, uh, what's the uh, national and international standards for that? And although that may seem like a very boring topic, I think uh, if you plan to uh, be an inventor sometime or just uh, be able to at least read the patents, I think this is a very good way of introducing yourself to familiar topics. And it shouldn't be only about patents. There are uh, a lot. There were a lot of opportunities in the blue book as Amy said, uh, that uh, provide you with, uh, with, a, like, with an opportunity to get introduced to some very, very niche topic, which you wouldn't, which you would probably struggle to get acquainted with yourself via the internet. So I think that's uh, one of the advantages of this program. So the second thing uh, were seminars. And I think the one I liked the most is what was about buildings and power, basically how architecture is shaped by the power structures in the society. Um, and what this shows is, is that uh, there were some ideas that I didn't even know that they existed. And nevertheless, they did. And there were a lot of people who researched them. And that's why uh, that's how I explored a completely new branch of knowledge that was unavailable to me uh, before. And that's the second advantage of the program because it uh, it literally gives you a new perspective, a set, a set of new perspective to look at life. And uh, that's like intellectually enriching you. Uh, the third thing uh, was about lectures. Uh, I think the one that I remember the most was about free trade, economics, and competitive advantage. Why free trade is basically good, why tariffs are bad. Uh, this is, was a very technical uh, lecture in nature because there were a lot of terminology, but it was also very accessible. And although uh, the audience was large, like 100 plus uh, participants in the Zoom meeting, but it was still possible to uh, ask some questions. I guess I asked like two or maybe three questions and got answers uh, to them. And um, I think this is uh, a way of um, getting acquainted with uh, what it's like to study in uh, university conditions uh, with the lecture format itself and to, of course, interact with very, very um, professional professors, yeah, <laughs> with, uh, with the experts in their fields. And uh, I didn't, oh, before that, I didn't even imagine that. Uh, single person can be so well trained and uh, well versed in uh, a very a small field of something. Uh, and you need to get used to that if you want to study in the university. So I think this was my, uh, I thought quite a lot of how to summarize uh, the academic part of the experience at YYGS. And I would uh, say that it's mostly about unrestricted exploration of opinions. And I think those three words matter equally. The first one being unrestricted. Um, it means that while the topic itself and the discussion was guided, the conclusions that you arrive to are 
not really predetermined by your mentors or lecturers. You get to decide what you do with the information provided uh, yourself. And of course, you can, you can and you should discuss it with the peers that you attended the lecture with. So uh, I think this kind of stimulates your uh, intellectual uh, activity. The third, uh, the, the second thing is exploration. Uh, it means that you weren't given a like a set in stone um, set of information. Uh, you were given some clues, and uh, you were given methods uh, of how to work with information. But it's again up to you how you uh, navigate in uh, in the topic. And the third thing is opinions because uh, I didn't say like information or truths or views because I think everyone, uh, professors and uh, participants alike, um, acknowledge the limitation of like their uh, their capacity, and they never said that like my opinion is the final truth. And I think this approach is very very healthy and vital to. Uh, to any sort of academic community. And at YYGS, it was uh, expressed to the highest degree, I guess. Um, and then the family times are, uh, so I, I'm finished with the academic part. The family times are, uh, as I said, like uh, 45, 50 minutes, I guess, meetings with uh, a small group of people. It's usually a very diverse group of people from uh, different countries. Uh, yeah, I'm like, it's uh, unfortunate to admit that I didn't even know the names of some countries before I met people from them. Like there were like some people from Eswatini and other countries and uh, you have different time zones, different cultures, different geographic backgrounds. And uh, that's, uh, that's why it's uh, the experience at Family Times is both fun and eye-opening because you just um, you just talk about something and you inevitably come to comparisons of like how it's done in your country or how uh, people of your culture uh, view something uh, some topic and uh, I think that's an opportunity you don't really get in like in your home environment because you're pretty much surrounded by the same people and I think this uh, really allows you to come out of your uh, cultural bubble uh, in a way. And also it's really fun because you get to know a, a lot of peers, like-minded peers and not so like-minded peers, which is also okay. Uh, that's even uh, greater for your like, uh, I would say, I would say the cognitive diversity of the community. And uh, that, and we, and there's a possibility that you'll still be in touch with them uh, after uh, graduating from the program so and make friends from all over the world um i think this yeah this this is the last slide and um yeah that was pretty much my experience and i'm ready to take questions if someone has them i'll stop sharing my screen now thank you so much arman it was very insightful and i appreciate you sharing your experience with all all these potential applicants. Armana, my question to you is if you could do this all over again, would you do it? Yeah, but I would choose a different track because I think all of them are great because I have I met friends from uh, different tracks and they pretty much uh, felt the same as I did. So maybe I would choose uh, the one about like culture and philosophy or the science thing, yeah. Fair, that's fair. Um, so now we can take questions. If anyone has questions, you can um, chat them or raise your hand, use the raise hand function. There is already a question about if it's um, need blind or need aware program. Right, so unfortunately we are not need blind. We do not have unlimited funds, but we are need aware. So when we, when we review applications, it is without any knowledge of any financial need. We make our admissions decisions and then we offer again as much as we can based on the information you provided. 
in your financial aid application. So it's very important to be as detailed as possible. Give us as much information and we do our best to bridge the gap. Unfortunately, you know, we can't give every student everything they need. So that is why we're need aware and we're not need blind. I see another question where it says, is it okay to apply to this program after junior year? So as long as you meet the, the requirements that I went over, so you must be um, at least between at least 16, basically between ages of 16 and 17, and have some high school remaining after the program. If you're a junior, you can attend the summer in between your junior and senior year. So I guess the answer to that question is a yes. Um, I saw somebody's hand raised. I think it went away. Um, I'm going to graduate at 15 doesn't mean that I will never be able to participate. You're going to graduate high school at 15 years old. That's pretty impressive. Um, you must be re returning to high school after the program. So if you can elaborate a little bit on that, I'm not, I'm not quite sure what you mean by that. Um, you can also send us an email. We can answer your question that way. Some tips to write the essays. So as I mentioned, my biggest tip is just to be as, as authentic as possible. We want to know your true response to the, to the question. So a lot of times this comes as a story. Tell us a story. Answer the question in the way of a story that's really engaging. Um, make Again, make sure you don't just write a stream of consciousness and then submit it. We want you to also, while we want you to, to write good substantive content, we also want to see your writing ability. This is it for our international students. This is a good way for us to gauge your English writing skills. So make sure it's edited, fine-tuned, and you know, good to go in terms of being able to submit it in, in a in a way that you know we we see that you put a lot of effort into it. Um, Tammy, could you please share that screen, uh, that uh, information about eligibility requirements? Because I see that lots of students missed it. So there are more questions about that. Sure. Here we go. This is all on our website as well. So if, uh, if, you have questions later on, it's written basically the same way on our website. You can take a screenshot of this. If you're in ninth grade or the US equivalent of ninth grade, you are not eligible to participate this year, but you should be able to participate next year. Um, I, can send, I can send this as a um, PDF and to, to you, and then you can send that around if, if that's of interest. Uh, yeah, sure. What qualities of our participants? Um, we, we do like to see students that are interested in YYGS. So in, within the application, tell us why, why you're applying to the program. Um, what specifically about YYGS is it that interests you? Of course, we need to see a strong academic record as YYGS is very academically rigorous. But that's not the only thing that we look at. We do look at the student as a whole, which is why we're interested in your activities. We're interested in your essay. We're interested in getting to know you a little bit more. What are you, what makes you uniquely you? And what are you as a person, an individual, going to contribute to these small group discussions? It's not a passive program where you can just sit and lecture for two weeks and then kind of complete the program. It's a participatory program. So we want to make sure that the students that we, you know, and as much as we can with a an online application, we want to make sure that you're going to participate contribute to conversations, you know, that you're interested in, in the program and demonstrated interest in the track that you're applying to. Um, we don't want this to just be another notch on your resume, you know, just another thing that you've completed. It's not that kind of a program, although I know students do think of it in that way, but we, you know, we really can pretty, our admissions team is very skilled at reading applications to suss out things like that. So just, just let us know why you want to participate and what you plan on getting from it and what you're going to contribute. Um, 
If the following year will be held in person, what will the circumstances be? Unpredictable. So of course we hope to be able to host the program in person in 2023. We all want to go back to being residential, but as we know, the world is unpredictable. And so if it's safe to host it in person, we 100% will. Um, and if we do, then the housing takes place in the, the dorms, the student dorms that Yale students live in. So um, they're res called residential colleges. So you would have roommates, you'd have a shared bathroom, you know, you're gonna be living like a Yale University college student. Um, if you turn 16 by July 19th, can you submit your application? Yes, if you're gonna be 16 by July 19th and you're in your 10th or 11th grade, you are eligible and you can submit your application and it will definitely be reviewed. Let's see if there's any other questions. Do we have any more questions? I'm gonna stop sharing so I can see. I do not see any questions, but maybe we can just wait like a minute. Sure. I actually love this idea that Armand said, unrestricted exploration of opinions. Yes. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's what Laura just said now. It's about academic exploration. And you are you are allowed coming from all different countries, cultures, family life you know, experiences, we want to hear your perspective. We want to hear your opinion in a, in, in a friendly way, of course. That's why we have instructors to facilitate these conversations to have friendly dialogue with each other. So um, yes, I mean, you should come and, and feel free to, you know, express your opinion in a friendly way and be heard. Uh, can you tell how many students from Kazakhstan participated last year? Um, I do not have that information off. off. Yeah, it's just interesting because I know that number is growing, right? Yes. Like participants from Kazakhstan. And I think that last year we had a good number. Just not sure. I think there are no questions. The number is growing. Last year I can, mm, I don't have that information offhand. But we definitely had a good amount of applications and I can see the reputation is growing in Kazakhstan. So that's fantastic. We're always happy to see that. Uh, I think if we do not have any questions, then maybe we can end this session and sure. I will post this recording on our Education USA Kazakhstan YouTube channel. And by the way, there are so many other YYGS uh, webinars that we have already recorded. Um, I think just this year we had about two sessions before. Uh, thank you, Emmy, a lot for uh, being with us today. Arman, thank you a lot for sharing your experience. It was really great to see you. And I would like to thank everyone for participating. Thank you, everybody. Um, we hope to see your applications. And again, if you have any questions, send us an email. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you, boy.